should we have concerns about the AstraZeneca vaccine? Because up until now, um, medical professionals have been saying, take whatever vaccine is given to you and don't worry about it. Should that be the case for AstraZeneca as well? I do think that should be the case. What we're seeing is people taking actions out of, you know, quote unquote, an abundance of caution with some, some blood clots that occurred post-vaccination. And I think it's important to remember when you look at the data, it doesn't appear that this is higher than the background rate. It's important to study this to make sure that that's not the case, but I don't think that we should be pausing vaccinations in the midst of a pandemic when you have a vaccine that's been given to tens of millions of people that is successful in places like the United Kingdom at curbing uh, their, their, uh, their pandemic. All of that really adds up to this probably being a spurious association and probably not th these these pauses are not coming at the best time for Europe when they're going back into lockdowns in certain countries when the solution to all of this is getting more vaccine into people's arms. Yeah, well, I feel like we've never been out of lockdown here in Europe's largest economy. We're having real problems um, still vaccinating the elderly and infirm here. Um, our, our senior politicians haven't even gotten shots in arms and they're in their 60s. So. Why, then, would a country like Germany, which needs vaccines wherever it can get them, suspend the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine just because of blood clotting that's sort of similar to the background rates? It, it's puzzling to me. What I think may be happening is because we're in an emergency pandemic situation, countries are very nervous about anything that's going to increase vaccine hesitancy or question the safety in the minds of the public because we want high vaccine uptake. And I can only speculate that that may be what's motivating them is that they want to make sure that the population will take the vaccine so that they have to go through these steps to make sure that there isn't a safety signal, even if many other countries, many other regulatory agencies and many scientists don't believe that this is a, a major issue because we, we do worry about people concerned about the safety uh, and, and that kind of influencing the decision not to get the vaccine. So that may be one consideration that's going on, but I do think that we have to just explain to the public that not everything that happens after a vaccine is gonna be caused by that vaccine. And that there are going to be many spurious associations that really have no biological mm -hmm. basis or causal connection. And we have to just talk to the public about this. And I think that they will likely understand that. Well, it's hard to convince, I think, a lot of the public already skeptical when you have major economies um, shutting down the use of, of the vaccine. I want to pivot, though, to what's going on in the U.S., doctor. Um, there was a story in The New York Times over the weekend about Florida. Its economy has basically been open this whole time. And yet, although the situation is tragic in the case of deaths, it doesn't seem that much worse than a lot of other states that had more serious restrictions. Um, how do you see it breaking down uh, after one year, you know, to total lockdowns versus countries or, or states that have had more liberal policies? What I think is happening is that you really can't just look at a state, look at the mitigation measures, and then just read off what their trajectory with the pandemic is going to be, because there are many other factors involved. And there are some states that that probably did a lot better than we thought they would do, despite the fact that they didn't have mask mandates. And I think Florida is one of them where we don't quite understand, was it the weather? Was it because people voluntarily did things? Is it because they protected their nursing homes well? So I think this is an important thing that we're gonna have to do at the end of this pandemic is look at the states, look at all the mitigation measures and figure out which ones worked, which ones didn't, which ones backfired so that we can right size this. And in general, I think that blanket types mm. of rules weren't the way to go. I think more of harm reduction being targeted based on how people are getting infected, that's the way to think about this. But it's going to take some time for all the dust to settle to know exactly which states fared the best. But surely, I would say that Florida didn't do as bad as many of us predicted it would.